Hello and welcome to the Roasted and Barrel Review. This is our third episode of season six. And today I am wanting to discuss the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. I had a chance, and by chance I mean like I joined the Louisville Bourbon Society, the Bourbon Society, about a month about a month prior. And in doing so, I was able to obtain the opportunity to get tickets to the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Um, at the time, everything was sold out. And I felt very privileged to go. So I'm going to talk about my experience there. I went on a Friday. I don't have the exact date on me, but it was a couple of weeks from the time of recording this. Um, and I showed up around 1030. There was already a line there. You had to show proof of negative, um, negative COVID test or vaccination. So you get in there. You get a cool coin and a little mini Glen Karen. Uh, I kind of like the little mini Glen Karen. Uh, you can fit a shot in there, and that's really what I care about. I didn't know the in regular size Glen Karen. I don't know the exact dimensions, but you can fit more than a shot. A shot's really all you need. Uh, so the little mini Glen Karen was nice. Walk in. It's a not grassy field, but grassy lawn of this big historical building. And you can try whiskeys. You can uh, buy whiskey. You can buy some merch, some paintings and stuff. I got a really nice painting, and it was pretty good. First thing I did was buy some drink tickets. It was 25 for five tickets. They had water for cleaning your Glen Cairn only, but it wasn't potable. It wasn't potable, but I still filled it up anyway. Like, I needed some water. I wasn't going to give a drink ticket for two waters. That was just ridiculous. And really, if it was that uh, dangerous, then why would you put it in your clean carom? I drank it. I didn't shit my pants. So I consider that a win for me. So during the... During the day, they had some, like, panels that I thought were interesting. There was one panel with, like, bourbon marketers from small distilleries all the way up to Buffalo Trace. That was pretty cool. Um, then they had the big boys, some distillers there. They had um, Bill Samuels up there. He was pretty nice. Um, overall, the thing was a, sens a sensory overload. And I came from Louisville. I got dropped off there, so I was kind of stuck there the whole day, and I felt it was a little bit much. I can't imagine what it would be like if you were from way out of town. I noticed some people came in town and had some of the hotels from Louisville drop them off there. It, it It's not an all-day affair. I think the only reason you'd go there at 10 a.m. is to... Buy some bourbon at Justin's House of Bourbon. And if that's your thing, that's your thing. Uh, know that they're going to put a markup on there. I think I would rather... I need to go to Justin's House of Bourbon, personally. Because I think the whole barrel pick thing is overrated. And I know they do the barrel pick thing. So they have a markup, which is their fair thing. If I tasted their barrel picks and liked it, then maybe I would. Other than that, I think it's I think it's a little bit ridiculous. But um, the food, the food there, the food offerings, because I mean you're drinking bourbon all day. If you're not trying to just go crazy, trying your pace yourself, you need food. Food offering was a little bit lacking. It was a taco truck and a ice cream thing, and then some popcorn around here and there. Very undersold of what they had. You could go in town, but to try and stay in the actual festival was a little bit lacking. Um, they had a museum there. They had a museum there that was actually pretty cool. I learned about some brands that are being resurrected. It was a pretty good, informative, self-guided tour. Towards the end of the day, there was a bourbon soiree with the different bourbon societies around Kentucky. Now, that was pretty fun. 
um, getting to talk to people, getting to um, try different bourbons with them. That was fun. But being there all day by myself um, just wasn't that great. I probably should have showed up around 3 or 4 and then called it a day by 10, uh, if being honest. So what are th some things that I think could improve upon the uh, Kentucky Bourbon Festival? First, I think there should be like a distillery depot, like a train depot. There are some distilleries, and by some I mean Willet, Preservation, 1792, Heaven Hill, and Bardstown Bourbon Company within the very near vicinity of that festival. I think it would definitely be worth their venture to basically close all close all tour scheduling from the distillery for the time of the festival and have it all scheduled at the festival. Basically have people meet at a certain location, have the buses take people there and then back and then get on another bus and go there and then back. And I think that would be nice time killer through the day. Uh, you'll also notice, or if you went there, you'd notice that there was another little mini party in the central of town. Like that just definitely, you could sense some division there and it wasn't really, didn't make you feel real good that the town was having its own festival as the bourbon, uh, the bourbon community was having its festival. It definitely seems like some division. I would try and like put some, I know people are getting, maybe getting a little tired of this, but I would try putting together um, a passport system for the festival to try the different businesses around the town square. Um, I would also think that a bourbon cook off, we need, there needs to be more food there. A uh, bourbon cook off uh, would be great. I know there's bourbon balls. I know that you can find other reasons to put bourbon in food, but there needs to be more food there. I'm not exactly sure where you'd put it, but getting some hometown cooking and making it health code compliant would be very nice. Now, what should I do recommend if you're going to the Bourbon Festival? If you're going to the Bourbon Festival, get your motives set out straight. If you're trying to buy stuff, get there right at opening and buy the stuff and get out of there. But if you're actually going for a long while, you're from outside the state of Kentucky or um, you really want to get immersed in it, I don't think there's enough there. But if you are, stay in town. I definitely could have used a nap spot. I spent, I spent some time Ugging water on a bench near the town. Uh, there's a roundabout in the center of town. Spent a a good amount of time just chugging water around there. So if you can get a spot in town, that would be great to just like take a nap. Um, I probably would recommend getting there around three or four. You can go to all the, the distillery booths and try some of that stuff. Um. What else would sign? Um, is the pro thing? Is the is the premium tickets worth it? I'd say yes. If you're doing all three days, I would have loved to have gone up into the little uh, premium penthouse at the top of that historical building and just got out of the sun. Or if it's gonna rain, just get out of the rain. Having that there would be key. They also had a like a little canopy type place for you can watch the um, watch the panels speak. They had an air conditioning, nice seats. I, I mean, if you're gonna come all the way there, you might as well spend the extra stuff. I didn't do the premium panels. I don't know what's all involved with that, but if you could get it, get it. As far as buying bourbon there, uh. I think you can go around. If that's your thing, that's your thing. Honestly, I would recommend going into town and going to this place called Toddy's. They got all the premium bourbons there. It's all for secondary. I even bought some for secondary. And it was, I bought a bottle of Weller Antique 107. I had tried it before, really liked it. I saw it for about $150, which is 
good size margins, but at least I've tried it before and really liked it. And it wasn't into the four figures or even above 200, which I thought was, re um, I thought it was a reasonable price given where bourbon's at right now. If we are living in strange times, I think that, um, with Eagle rare and this glass shortage going with Eagle rare being almost impossible to find and this glass shortage going on. I think that $150 for Weller Antique 107 could be a solid investment. I'm going to put it in my my buddy bunker, bourbons for sharing. I'm definitely putting together a collection of bourbons to kind of bring to bond with some buddies, and that's going to be in there. Uh, anything else that I would do? Um... I guess don't storage... If you buy a rock glass there, don't store it in your luggage because I recently just did that on a trip to Denver and it fucking shattered and I'm really kind of upset about it. But that's neither here nor there. Now on to the review. For this review, I had to do use a Kentucky bourbon and I'm doing uh, Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel with Stoff's Coffee. Now for the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, I actually picked this up at the distillery, which was having a strike at the time of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Not really going to go into the strike other than um, it's kind of shut down the distillery for now, so you can't go pick up anything there. When I went to the distillery, I showed up there probably about 5 a.m. was the only one there. It was still dark out. Pretty cool little sunset. I feel that I, while I was lucky to get the Elijah Craig, Buffalo Trace is the place to go for a distillery. Now, um, the Elijah Craig, the Toasted Barrel. It's got a distinct smell of caramel and butter with trace amounts of pecans. Uh, it's a sweet and smooth whiskey, again, with a caramel finish. I think this is a great bourbon. Um, I'm definitely getting into the finished bourbons, which is you they age it in one barrel, and then they take it out, and then they lightly... They lightly char or toast another barrel and then put it, put that whiskey, put the whiskey that was in one barrel into a second barrel. It was really good. This is to be given to someone that you want to impress if they don't know any better, if they don't know to look for the toasted barrel, if they only recognize the Elijah Craig barrel. This, like, this would be great for a significant other's parent, parents. I think by this would be a top bourbon contender of the season. Love it. Stoff's Coffee, the bourbon pecan flavored coffee. This is a flavored coffee that delivers a cream, smooth, creamy taste. This coffee is the antidote to the sugary diabetes that de that's delivered to you in most major coffee shops. What I'm talking about is if you've ever been to Starbucks and seen somebody order something that's like three-fourths filled with foam or whipped cream or something, this is the antidote to that. I'm not sure how much bourbon is in the flavor, but it's definitely pecan, and it is delicious. The application of flavor, flavor to the coffee beans is very well done. I could definitely see this, see myself finishing this bag in no time. Buy, so buy the bourbon, buy the coffee. As for it paired, the toasted barrel with the stoffs. This may be a trend for now. I'm just going to presume that two sweet things do not go together. This tastes like muddled licorice. This is just so disappointing because both of these are good separately, and unfortunately, you, you aren't going to improve upon them by mixing them together. Um, I got to go deny here. These two were not meant to be paired together. Um, this is just disappointing. Um but still, I would definitely recommend buying these two separately. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe if you can. And until next time, you've been listening to the Roasted and Barreled Review.